We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. Uh, just me. Just me. Kyle's got some uh, work travel going on uh, this uh, Sunday night. So rolling just me at the moment. Um, not, I don't know why I said at the moment. He's not going to just magically show up. But uh, how, how is everyone out there in YouTube and podcast land doing? Uh, Jared with the Sloopcast. Um, we got uh, some some updates we're, we're going to, this is a recruiting episode and I've, I have lumped the portal into recruiting episodes, which makes sense to me. Seems like the same basic building block idea, which is what we're doing here. The Buckeye building blocks. This is our recruiting show. Um, let's do some portal updates real quick. Actually, before, before we even get into the recruiting thing, um, huge wins, getting Jack Sawyer and uh, ransom back on the squad, both returning to the Ohio State Buckeyes. Uh, they have announced that they are uh, not going to the NFL at this time and they will be returning. So those are two huge wins for Ohio State, two enormous, huge wins for Ohio State. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see in general what the Ohio State defensive front will look like next year, but I think that's a different conversation for a different episode. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him change it up a little bit. But again, different topic for a different episode. Let's talk about the portal. Um, big, big week for Ohio State in the portal. Um, Ohio State has required uh, Will Howard out of the portal. Uh, Will Howard, obviously a quarterback from Kansas State. Kansas State quarterback is um uh, he will be this will be his last year in college football playing for Ohio State. He is a super senior. He has one year remaining eligibility, which I think is exactly what Ohio State was looking for. I think a lot of people were looking at some younger quarterbacks who are out in the market, out on the transfer portal. Like, oh, I said, you should go get that guy. I said, you should go. Get... I believe Ryan Day and staff uh, really like Lincoln Keenholz. Uh, they really like Air Nolan. And, and I don't think they wanted to jeopardize either of those two players uh, statuses with Ohio state. So I, I think it's a wise move. Uh, I think it was in their plan to uh, not disrupt the future of the quarterback room. Um, it's yet to see what Devin Brown will do in response to this. Uh, I, I think what, I think what the goal is, if you're, you know, Ryan day, or, you know, what you would want to see as an Ohio State fan is you want to see Will Howard and Devin Brown go into spring with this a quarterback competition and have one of them win it. That's the goal here. You want you want these two guys to go into competition and see who wins. You want them to compete against each other. You want this, the other one to make the other one better. And you want the other one to eventually back up the other one in case someone gets hurt in the season. Modern college football. I don't know how realistic all of that is. Um, we'll see if Devin Brown sticks. Uh, I believe Ohio State players, because of the late bowl game, have till the, I think it's the 10th. I might be mistaken about that. Have until January 10th to enter the transfer portal. Um, I would be surprised to see Devin Brown do that, but there's the second portal that opens up after spring ball. And I think it's if Will Howard does win the job or if Devin Brown feels like Will Howard's winning the job, then he'll uh, then he will have a decision to make as far as his future at Ohio State. And we'll see what happens. Um, but, yeah, as far as Will Howard and Devin Brown go, I, I think the goal. Essentially, is that these guys or one of these guys are, are the quarterback this year. And then I, I think you see, you know, I think it depends upon if it's if Devin Brown wins, then this obviously changes things. He has more eligibility remaining. But, you know, if Will Howard wins and if Devin Brown leaves, it does set up the 2025 quarterback competition between Keen Holtz and Nolan, which will be an interesting situation to watch for sure. Uh, Ohio State has brought in Seth McCullen. Um, he is the center uh, 
well, he was the center for Alabama. He was in the he was playing in the playoff game. He had some bad snaps. Um, so I know a lot of people have some mixed feelings about bringing him in. Um, I'll say that I, I don't think that it is determined at this point if he will be a center or a guard at Ohio State. And I also would say that a player is not defined by their worst game. So he had some snapping issues on a really big stage. And that, of course, is concern. Like, I don't know if you totally ignore that that happened. Uh, you know, you don't totally ignore that that happened, but you also don't condemn him for it. And also, like, Ohio State might be looking to have. I think there's bringing him in as an interior offensive lineman who can play center. Doesn't mean that he will play center. It means he can play center. And I, I think that's about it. But you you add, I, I think, a starter for the offensive line. Uh, where is to be determined? We don't know what Jackson is doing at this time. I do hear that, you know, he is seriously considering going pro. And after the season he had this year, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, but we'll see what he does. Um, yeah, but th those are the two portal pickups. Uh, for Ohio State uh, this week. And uh, it should also be noted that Ohio State appears at this time to be uh, the favorite uh, to pick up running back Judkins from Ole Miss. From what I am hearing, from my understanding, is that Ohio State will move on Judkins if Henderson decides to go to the NFL. So, it looks like Ohio State will have a running back, an experienced running back on the team next year uh, to uh, share carries. Um, oh, I'm going to blank on names. Of course, I'm going to blank on names. Um, you're you're going to have a, a running back come in to split carries with Dallin Hayden. Dallin Hayden is going to be your number two running back next year. Uh and then you'll have either Henderson or Judkins as your RB1 next year. That's how I see this playing out. Uh, I well, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you bring in Judkins regardless, but uh, I, I, I don't think so, personally, um, because when it comes to the transfer portal, you, you know, I, and I know that like, it's less obvious, like in the NFL, you have a salary cap and everyone knows what the salary cap is and everyone has the same salary cap and people are out there, you know, doing the math on the salary cap. So it's a little bit more obvious for people to track, but Ohio State or rather the, the NIL at Ohio State, if we put all, the, all that in quotation, um, Ohio State has a salary cap. They have a budget. They have an NIL budget. And I don't think that you spend the money in order to have both Judkins and Henderson on the team when you do have Dallin Hayden, who is excellent right there. You know, I would much rather that money be budgeted towards bringing in a second offensive lineman along with McCullough. That's my two cents. Anyway, those are portal. I, I as far as I, I'm not aware of any players at this moment who are currently in the portal that Ohio State um, is is targeting. That there's a mutual that there's a mutual um, interest with anyone else currently in the portal. Um, so that's my understanding right now that there's not a. An additional target other than Judkins out there with, you know, Ohio State has an active relationship with. All right, let's uh, let's move over to the mock. Uh, let's move over to the 2025 mock. Um, we've done mocks for the 2025 list in the past uh, for the 2025 class in the past. Um, I think this is my first I'm going to say like very serious attempt at it. Uh, th I think this is my first like really like we're we're now in 2025 season as far as recruiting goes. And I know that the 2024 class isn't technically wrapped. Ohio State's still trying to get some defensive tackles, but we're not talking about 2024 today. 
focus now, the main focus is now on 2025. So this is, I would say, my first truly sincere 2025 mock. So let's get to it. Um, quarterback, Taven St. Clair, uh, Ohio kid. He's already in the recruiting class. Uh, that's not a prediction on my part. He's already committed for what it's worth. Like, not afraid of, not concerned about uh, him flipping, him uh, decommitting at, at any point. Uh, there, there's nothing currently out there that would suggest that that's a possibility. Uh, running backs. I have two running backs in this class. Uh, running back Byron Lewis, who's a national player, absolute stud. Um, and then in addition to Byron Lewis, I have uh, running back Bo Jackson, uh, running back slash athlete Bo Jackson. Uh, we've talked about Bo Jackson before. It's, it's a, I don't know if it's a uh, I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing to be a running back with the name Bo Jackson. Uh, but uh, he is an Ohio kid, and I think he's the second running back in this class. If for whatever reason, either of those recruitments fall apart, although I feel pretty good about both of them, or for whatever reason, either of those recruitments fall, up, uh, fall apart. Marquise Davis is another Ohio kid uh, who I think uh, Ohio State uh, would go and grab in a heartbeat. Um, Jordan Davis is also a, a guy who I think I've had in mocks in the past. I feel a little less confident on Jordan Davis now than I did maybe the last time I did a 2025 mock. So I think we're going Byron Lewis, Bo Jackson for now. Wide receivers. We're very used to over the past couple of years, Ohio state having insane wide receiver classes. Um, and I'm not shooting for the stars on this one. Um, we have Javen Boggs, um, who's already committed in this class. Again, another absolute stud guy, uh, Quincy Porter, another excellent wide receiver, uh, from the New Jersey area I have in this class. And I also have an Ohio kid, uh, named Quinton Simmons jr. Uh, who is excellent. And I, and I think is a, is a borderline lock to, to join this class. Um, Boggs right now, the only guy, uh, he's out of Florida. Uh, the only guy who I have as a, or excuse me, that is currently committed. Uh, but Quinton Simmons Jr. is is a guy Ohio State needs to go get. Uh, I have a very Ohio heavy class. If that if that hasn't if, if that hasn't come apparent yet, it's going to come. It's going to become apparent very quickly. I have a very Ohio heavy class. I think Ohio needs. I think Ohio State needs to refocus on recruiting the state of Ohio, and you know. <laughs> as luck would have it, uh, the recruiting or the the high school talent in Ohio has gotten better, is getting better. Um, I think Ohio is much more recruitable. Uh, last year, this year, into the 2026 already, um, I, I think is already. Uh, oh, we have Austin joining us down in the chat um, already the 2026 class is, is looking pretty decent, uh, for Ohio. So in the age of NIL and the age of players flipping last second, more and more, um, I think it's incredibly important to focus in on the state of Ohio, uh, as a recruiting beast, as a, as a, as a talent base to go get kids who are going to be loyal to the institution. 2026 Austin says 2026 is going to be good, but I think, with the right staff additions, 2025 could be elite. Oh, and there's just Kyle saying hi. Hi, Kyle. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not even talking about the Ohio State classes. You you jumped in with me talking specifically about Ohio as a as a talent producing state. As as a as a high school talent creator, a uh, creator, um, uh, how it's picked up over the past couple years and is uh, still getting better. Ohio is definitely top 10, maybe top five. Uh, I mean, California, Texas, Florida, Georgia, are your top four. As, as you said, the same thing. Those are your top four. Um, 
Th- those are your S tiers. Five can be debated. Yeah, I'm not. I can I can think of a few different. North Carolina puts out a lot of great players. Virginia is putting out a lot of great players. Uh, Tennessee puts out a decent number of players. Um, I I would have to. I, I I we all know who the top four are, and and uh, that's that's that. Um, I would have to put some thought into like who five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are. Um, moving on. Hey, uh, I was just talking about uh, Javon Boggs. Austin, you're down in that area. Do you have any thoughts on Javon Boggs? Um, tight ends. Moving on to tight ends. Um, Luca Gilbert. Uh, this is another Ohio player. Uh, I think this is another excellent relationship. I think a commitment here could even be imminent. Uh, big fan of Luca Gilbert. Um, Luca Gilbert is... I'll actually look this up as I'm as I'm typing it. Yeah, Lakota West. I couldn't remember which Lakota it was. Uh as a you know rising senior, 6'7, 233 already at tight end. Um I, I think again, excellent pickup. Go get him. And then you have Nate Roberts. Nate Roberts was uh at one point committed to Notre Dame. Uh he's from Oklahoma. So Interesting follow, interesting recruitment already for for him. Um, I think Ohio State's in good position here. Um, I, I don't feel as strongly about Nate Roberts as I feel about Luca Gilbert. Um, again, but that's why you know we're refocusing on on the Ohio side of things. That's why um, you know we're uh, yeah. That's I mean again. That's why we're focusing on you know go get some Ohio guys. And even being from Oklahoma, I, I do like Ohio State's chances more than Oklahoma at this point. Um, but it's, it's potentially a long commitment, uh, not a guy who's down the street. But I think it's very realistic that Ohio State gets. Uh, and I do think this is a two tight end class. Um, and I do think it's very likely uh, that Ohio State ends up with both Gilbert and Roberts. And, and again, I think they do want two tight ends. Um, should either of those situations, should either of those relationships fall apart? Uh, tight end slash athlete named Landon Pace out there. Uh, you, you hear that last name, Pace. Uh, he's from St. Louis. Uh, yes, yes, uh, son of the great Orlando Pace. Um, another option out there. Um, some other wide receivers, I know I already went over wide receivers, but some other Ohio state wide receivers to keep an eye on, uh, Desi Jones, Andrew Marsh, Nishon Montgomery, Jamie French, who is currently committed to Alabama, but Hey, it's early. Uh, and then, uh, Jackson Wiley, another familiar last name, uh, another Ohio kid who I think could be a, a, a target at wide receiver. Now, if Ohio State has been terrible anywhere in recruiting recently, uh, Ohio State has been terrible of recruiting the offensive line position. Now, thank God, the the state of Ohio is starting to uh, produce some really good offensive line talent. So Ohio State can get a lot of work done simply focusing on the state of Ohio. Simply focusing on the state of Ohio, Ohio State can get a lot of work done. Uh, out of Toledo, you have Carter Lowe. Uh, Carter Lowe is, depending upon which service you're looking at, uh, Carter Lowe's one of the best offensive tackles in the country. Um, 24 Sports has him uh, as a five-star player, 30th overall player in the country, um, fourth best offensive tackle in the country. Um, I, and I think Ohio state, I, I think, that, I think Ohio state's going to get Carter Lowe. Like I think Carter Lowe wants to come to Ohio state. Ohio state obviously wants Carter Lowe. Um, I, I think you just, you just have to, you just have to follow that up. You just <laughs> like, you just got to close that deal. You got to close that deal. Um, and, and I think Ohio state will be in great shape. 
Um, as far as like, you know, you try and get like that one offensive tackle every class who's like a difference making offensive tackle. I think that is your guy. And he is in state this year. Don't mess it up. Doesn't stop there, however. Uh, it does not stop there. I, I think Ohio State also uh, has a, a great opportunity to get Nolan Davenport, an offensive tackle uh, from Maslin, Ohio. Uh, I think Ohio State, again, that's a, another great pickup, uh, I think, potentially for Ohio State. He's not as highly ranked at this time uh, as Carter Lowe. But I, I think, you know, a lot of times Ohio kids can be a little under ranked early on and that's OK um, because of restrictions, practice restrictions and whatnot. Um, it's it's a little bit difficult uh, for the for Ohio kids to go out and camp and be seen and all of that. Right. So it, it can be a little bit difficult um, to 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 really move up the rankings. But. Yeah, I think Ohio State uh, is in good shape if they go get those two offensive tackles. Um, and, and I think that there are some interior guys from the state of Ohio that Ohio State would also be incredibly happy to pick up. Um, Jeremy Adkins and Raphael Green are, are, I think, the two guys who I'm going to include in this class. Those are the two guys I'm going to include in this class as additional offensive linemen for Ohio State. Um, from the state of Ohio. Um, I believe both of these players are technically listed as tackles by 24 seven sports. If you go look at the 24 seven sports database, I believe both of them are, like I said, at this time uh, lifted listed as offensive tackles. I do think, however, uh, that I think their long-term future could potentially be on the interior of the offensive line. Um, Atkins is very tall, so that might be prohibitive. Um, but I think Raphael Green's a guy who Ohio State can get and develop. I think Atkins could be a tackle. Maybe if, you know, you bring in both, you bring them in and you see, right? Like you bring them in and, and you see where they go. Cause you know, maybe Davenport is a guy who you bring in as a tackle but you could also move him to guard if you need to. And then same with Atkins, you bring Atkins in as a tackle, but maybe he's a guard and, and you do what you need to do. Uh, eventually, potentially one of them gets, gets bumped inside. Um, there's also Tucker Caddis out there who I, I think is not someone I'm including in the mock at this time, um, but is definitely a guy you can keep an eye on. Um, and Raphael Green, who I already mentioned, uh, another guy who I think is uh, a very talented offensive lineman who Ohio State could add to this class. So it's four guys from the state of Ohio. I actually gave you five names, although, um, as I said, I'm not I'm not including Catus, Catus, K A T T U S. If I'm mispronouncing that, and this is the Sloopcast, so I almost. Assuredly, am mispronouncing that. Um, I think is another is is a really I think another excellent option for Ohio State, who I'm not including in this mock, but I'm keeping a close eye on. Uh, now, I think Ohio State to go along with Carter Lowe. I, I think Ohio State needs to get a like a, a can't miss true offensive tackle out there. I think it is like a three tackle, two guard class. Um, and if you bring in all these guys who are all technically listed as tackles and you end up moving some of them to guard, I'm OK with that because I don't think they all project to tackle at the next level. Um, but I am including one player who is uh, not uh, from the state of Ohio in this mock. Um, his name is Ty Harwood. Uh, yeah, Ty Harwood. Uh, he is a, uh, what is, what is my computer doing? Oh, excuse me. Ty Haywood. That's what my computer's doing. Ty Haywood. Uh, he is, a, uh, another offensive tackle. He's from Denton, Texas. Ohio state has pulled some guys out of Denton in the past. Um, uh, this is a high four-star guy, 59th player in the country, uh, 
either in or just outside the top five offensive tackles in the country. This is a possibility for Ohio State. Now, as far as the five names I've already given you on the offensive line, he's going to be the least likely, I think. Probably going to be the least likely guy, which, you know, makes sense, right? He's the one guy not from Ohio. Uh, But I think it's also a guy who you could go get. Um, so those are, I mean, so those are my five offensive linemen for this class, uh, Carter Lowe, Ty Haywood, Nolan Davenport, um, Jame- uh, Jameel Atkins and Raphael green. That's your offensive line for the, for the mock. Uh, that's one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, two tight ends, five offensive linemen. Let's focus over on the defensive side. And by the way, the, uh, I have out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 players on the offense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them are from the state of Ohio. When I say I'm focusing in on the state of Ohio this year as a strategy that I think Ohio State can and should implement, I'm trying to lay out what I think is a good path forward for Ohio State. Building a strong, loyal base of Ohio uh, kids and also like some regional kids too, guys who are from nearby Ohio um, and then sprinkling some elite national talent on top of that. And, and I think I think that's the path moving forward. Uh, edge rush. Uh, I have. First item, uh, the best edge rusher out of the state of Ohio from Winton Woods, uh, which is near Cincinnati, Justin Hill. Uh, this is a, a four star player, currently a four star player. Um, again, best reg- edge rusher out of the state of Ohio. Uh, Ohio State can absolutely uh, make this happen. I, I think um, I, I don't I don't know what else more to say about that. <laughs> quite frankly. Uh, and then you can also go get Cedric works. I think Cedric works another, again, another kid from Ohio. Uh, he's from uh, Claymont, Ohio, excuse me, Clayton, Ohio, uh, Northmont specifically. Um, this is another like four star pass rusher from the state of Ohio. I think we've in the past couple recruiting classes, try to just go get the best pass rushers in the country. And it's not panned out for us late in the recruiting cycle. I think a strategy needs to change. I think you can go get Cedric works. I think you can, you know, go get Justin Hill. And then on top of that, you can pursue, hopefully get, but absolutely pursue then like an elite national guy. That's how we have to operate these things, in my opinion, in the future. So uh, we I am adding a elite national guy on top of uh, the two Ohio kids. Uh, I am adding Zahir Manthus. Um, he is from Emotep Institute in Philadelphia. Um, he is a high four star guy, 77th overall player in the country. Best player out of the state of Pennsylvania. Um, Again, I I think, you know, we're going outside of Ohio, but we're, you know, Ohio State has had uh, great success recruiting Pennsylvania, Uh, even Philadelphia recently, which Philadelphia, you know, I say it was always good at like Western PA, but they've, you know, been crossing over into Philadelphia recently, you know, most notably Marvin Harrison Jr. So I think Zaheer Manthus is just, and I'm not 100% sure at this time, like, how all of his relationships are shaking down at this point. Uh, but you know, and of course, like I think there, there are other defensive ends, national talent, Ohio, or excuse me, outside of Ohio tight ends who Ohio state can and should be pursuing. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of great defensive ends out there. Obviously. Um, I think Jameel ham is another guy who you could be looking at, uh, is another defensive end. I have, uh, noted in my notes. So yeah, but for right now, mock for the sake of this mock, I'm sticking with Justin Hills here, Mathis and Cedric works at defensive tackle. 
Do you think I was going to go position group without including an Ohio kid? You are wrong. I am absolutely 100% going to be uh, including yet another Ohio kid in the defensive tackle class uh, for the 2024 class. Um, Brandon Caesar from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. High, uh, high three star guy. I know. I think Ohio State really likes him. Uh, he's already been getting crystal balls for Ohio State. Um, absolute win of a pickup for Ohio State. I think it's a relatively easy win. Got to lock down Ohio. Got to lock down Ohio early. And I think uh, Brandon Caesar uh, is a, is an excellent pickup. Uh, and uh, adding on top of Caesar, uh, we're going. Uh, we're going back to Philadelphia. Uh, we're going to talk about Maxwell Roy. Uh, he is from St. Joseph, St. Joseph's Prep High School. Um, top 100 player in the country. Top 10 defensive tackles in the country. Already 6'3", 270. Uh, and is the number two player out of the state of Pennsylvania. I have Ohio State <laughs> kind of trying to rob Pennsylvania of its two best players is is where we're currently sitting um linebacker at linebacker uh if you think I, again do you think i'm gonna go another position group without an ohio kid you're wrong i have an ohio kid at every single position i have an ohio kid at every single position now this time it was pretty easy eli lee linebacker state of ohio is already committed to the class um he is out of Akron, uh, Archbishop, Archbishop Hoban, um, already committed to this class. Um, you might look at his recruiting num You know, he's a he's a three star guy right now. Uh, not under, I would say, under analyzed at this point. Quite frankly, if, if, if we're looking at his recruiting profile, if we look, if we look at you know, sort of what's been written, what's been analyzed. I would say as far as the national services are concerned, I would say he's just under recruited it or excuse me, under analyzed at this point. I, I don't think that uh, recruiting services have a good feel for him yet. So we'll see after, you know, the national guys sort of catch up what they think about Eli Lee. And I think he'll be uh, higher than an 88 personally. Uh, once they start doing their homework on him. In addition, uh, in addition to Eli Lee, we have Maddox Arnold. Uh, Maddox Arnold is out of Elder in Cincinnati. Excuse me. No, I'm sorry. I have him on my watch list. I have Maddox Arnold uh, on my watch list as another linebacker that Ohio State could pursue. Uh, who I do have, however, is linebacker Dante McClellan. Uh, Dante McClellan is the guy who I ended up putting in this recruiting class. All right. Um, yeah. Dante McClellan. Moving on from the linebackers, uh, cornerbacks. Oh boy, cornerbacks. Ohio State has already had two big wins here. Two big wins at the cornerback position. Um, yesterday, as we record this, two days ago, as the day we release it, Ohio State picked up Devin Sanchez. Devin Sanchez is, according to most, if not all services, the best cornerback in the 2025 class. This is an enormous win for Ohio State. Uh, he's out of the uh, he's out of North Shore High School in Houston, Texas. Um, the composite ranking has him as the second best cornerback, but the 24 seven sports proper ranking has him at number one and the fourth overall player in the country and the number one player out of the state of Texas. And he has committed to Ohio State. But. <laughs> but uh it's the recruitment's not over the recruitment for devin sanchez is not over uh getting devin sanchez is amazing and fantastic but f near an entire year out from 
the early national signing day. Uh, the, the, this recruitment is far from over. Uh, just, you know, getting the commitment is one thing. Keeping the commitment will be another. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that ends up. We'll see how that plays out. Ohio State is at the very least in the lead right now. Uh, and I I pray and I hope and, you know, I don't we'll, we'll see what happens when people start throwing money at Devin Sanchez when. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. That's that's really all that can be said about that. Um, already in the class as well, Blake would be. Uh, Blake would be is another excellent player. Uh, he is uh, not from the state of Ohio, um, but a, another excellent player who recruited to Ohio State uh, not long back. Um, Devin would be is uh, just outside again, depending upon which service you're looking at, uh, either is or is just outside the top 10 cornerbacks in the country uh he's pretty consensusly a top 100 player in the country uh blake would be is an amazing player uh he's out of maryland um so i would I'm, I'm going to at this point start counting maryland as like a regional recruiting territory maryland's not super close to ohio but it's it's a lot closer than texas um, it's a lot close, a lot closer than Texas, a lot closer than Georgia, a lot closer than Florida. Um, uh, so I am going to start counting Maryland. I, Ohio state's had a lot of success in Philadelphia and Maryland and Virginia, um, sort of that greater Northeast corridor portion of the, uh, United States. I said had a lot of success in that area and I'm going to because it's a big 10 territory at this point, I am going to start including, you know, the Maryland and Virginia area and the New Jersey area as regional territory for Ohio state. So I feel a lot better about Blake would be um, entering and remaining in this class. Now it's really, really difficult. He committed all the way back in October. It's hard to keep an out of state, even if it's a regional territory, it's hard to keep a the kid, you know, committed for that long. So we'll see how it plays out. We'll see how it plays out. And again, those are two non Ohio kids who have already committed, but uh, I have two Ohio kids. Well, one of them's we'll, we'll, we'll talk for, let's, let's talk about Trey McNutt first. Let's talk about Trey McNutt. Now there is at least some conversation at this point. Um, is Trey McNutt a cornerback or is he a safety? There is conversation. There is conversation there, right? Uh, I am for now uh, going to be talking about Trey McNutt as a cornerback. For the sake of this class, I'll be talking about Trey McNutt as a cornerback. Um, that might change. But, you know, next time I do this mock, I, I, I might change that. But for right now, uh, for the sake of this mock, I will be including him in the cornerback class. And I and I do think that this is a four person cornerback class. If all plays out the way Ohio State wants it to play out. Uh, he's uh, out of Shaker Heights, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, he if, if you're if you're old <laughs> uh, and you're wondering, McNutt, didn't Ohio State? Use? Yes. Yes, uh, he, he is Ohio State legacy. Uh, in addition to Trey McNutt, uh, we have uh, not totally technically, depending upon who you ask, he's currently living, he currently goes to a Conroe High School in Texas, and his name is Dorian Brew. Dorian Brew, however, um, is a Buckeye legacy. Uh, I believe his... His mother used to run track for Ohio State, I, if I'm remembering that correctly. He lived in Ohio until semi-recently. He spent most of his life in Ohio. Um, he is currently in Texas. I consider him to be uh, an Ohio kid. For, for all, all things considered, 
all things considered, Dorian Brew, I'm counting as an Ohio kid, even though he is from Texas currently. He is currently in Texas. He is from Ohio. Um, so I'm in I'm, a, I'm going to include uh, Dorian Brew as far as the my uh, Ohio counter. Uh, and that brings the cornerback class, uh, the mock anyway, to four guys. Once again, Blake would be Devin Sanchez already committed, adding Trey McNutt and Dorian Brew, a four person cornerback class. Hey, Chop, how you doing? Uh, turn the Discord screen back on for a second. Tim Walton is a stunt. I agree. Tim Walton, I don't think gets talked enough. Gets talked about enough. Um, what he's doing at Ohio. I think this cornerback class is already on lock, honestly. I love his inspirational speeches daily. Yeah. Um, and again, like I think he has this cornerback class on lock already. Now, again, I already talked about keeping Sanchez in the class is going to be difficult. Maybe Dorian Bruce actually a safety. Um, or excuse me, Trey McNutt is actually a safety. But man, this cornerback class already looks like it's coming together or has come together. I don't think it'll be that difficult. Mama Sanchez is all in. Yeah, man, but it's it's 2024. And once NIL money starts flying around, who knows? I'm just saying who knows. It's it's the Wild West out there. Um, and it's it's, you know, 13 months until or excuse me, 11 months until National Signing Day. They don't seem to be that family. It's money, man. Like it. If. Life changing money comes from somewhere. And like, I don't know, like there's no judgment from me. If someone's offering you life changing money. I can't judge you for turning that down. That's all. Safety. We're almost done. We have two more players. We have two more players. Um, I have uh, one Ohio kid, one not Ohio kid. Um, uh, what constitutes life changing money? Amount. I think that depends upon how much. I think it depends upon the financial situation you come from. Honestly. Like my idea of life changing money might be different than someone who's significantly less well off than me uh, or someone who's significantly more well off than me. Um, so I don't I don't think there's a specific number. To to say what that is. Uh, out of Virginia, which, again, I am counting as recruiting regional recruiting territory at this point, Messiah Del Home. Um, now, if, again, no, this this time it's a no. If you, if you remember a Panthers quarterback, uh, last name Del Home, uh, not related. I'm going I'm, I'm going to I'm just going to assume and you're going to trust me. Um, yeah, Jake DeLome. This is Messiah DeLome. Uh, he is a safety out of, like I said, uh, Warwick High School, which is in uh, Newport News, Virginia. Uh, by most services, he's approximately 10th, top 10 safety, approximately top 100 player in the country. Cousins uh, may be distant. I'm just going to say they don't look like they're related. And you're going to believe me. We're going to leave it at that. Um, and then uh, staying within the state of Ohio for our second safety, because that is what we're doing here. Uh, we're staying inside the state of Ohio for our second safety. Um, and, and I'll say this, and I will say this, I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, that this individual is in fact a safety. Wayne Warrior. No. Uh, not 100% sure this individual is a safety. I think that is 
still up for grabs. I think some people have him as a corner. Some people have him as a wide receiver, even uh, Cody Haddad um, from St. Ignatius and Cleveland is the second safety I have in this class. Fahim Delane. Uh, I, you know, I have Fahim Delane on the watch list. Um, I think that would be amazing. Uh, he, I believe he's the best safety in the country. Is he not chop? Um, I believe he's the number one safety in the country. Um, I guess probably dep again, depending upon which service you look at is top safety in the country. I think there's a relationship there with Ohio state. It's not impossible. Like there is a relationship there. Um, but I'm just not projecting it at this time. Um, some other names to throw out there. Keep an eye on, um, in the defensive back room, um, Dwayne Galloway, uh, as far as I can tell, not related, um, Dwayne Galloway, uh, a cornerback from the state of Ohio, uh, Ohio state also has good relationships with Devin Williams, Mark Sanchez, the fourth Mason Alexander. Uh, we already brought up, uh, safety Fahim Delane. And, uh, I'd also say keep an eye out on Jaden Hudson. Um, at linebacker, um, additional names to look out for, uh, Ohio kid, Maddox Arnold, um, Weston Port, who I think is out of Philadelphia. Anthony Sack, I know, I think is also out of Philadelphia. I didn't, I don't have that written down. I should have written it down in my notes. Um, and Elijah Melendez, um, who just committed to Miami not long ago, but I don't consider that recruitment over for what it's worth. Um, yeah, we've become recruiting rivals with Miami somehow. I don't know how or why that happened. Um, some additional defensive line names, uh, Isaiah White, Gertie, uh, Sussfeld, Sust, Solstead, Solstead, <laughs> maybe, uh, Jamal and Jamal Ham. um, some additional offensive linemen to keep an eye on Micah DeBose. We already talked about Tucker Caddis, um, Douglas, a two Matty Augustine, Jalen Matthews, Caden Strayhorn and Chauncey Gooden, who I believe is a guy who I had in my last recruiting class. Um, and I think those that's, uh, I think that's everybody. I think I, I think I mentioned everyone who is uh, either in the mock or in my watch list. So that's our 2025. Uh, the boss, former Georgia commit. Yes. Yes, he is. Um, and, I, and I think there's a there. And again, I, don't, I have him in the watch list specifically because I think there's a possibility. But they're not in the mock, so I don't think it's a strong possibility or at least not strong enough to make the top five. You know, because that's essentially what it is. I'm picking like the top five most likely and I'm throwing them in the mock. That's that's essentially how it works. Right. All right. Uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the 2026. This is just a quick 2026 primer. This is just a primer. This isn't a mock. This is just a primer. Top five is who we should go after. No. No, what I'm saying well, I know. I think that's what we've been doing that recently and it's not been working. I think you build a strong base of Ohio based players who are going to be more loyal to the program who aren't going to transfer out after one year or aren't going to flip at the end of the recruiting cycle. You build a strong base of Ohio kids to build out the roster and then you try and get elite guys to mix in. Loyal like Chip. Chip came home, did he not? And I know he transferred out, but it was what was best for him. I don't think it hurt Ohio State, quite frankly. I think Ohio State is fine. Like he's going to go someplace and he's going to get some snaps and that's going to be good for everybody. All right. 2026 primer. Quarterbacks to keep an eye on. Uh, Ohio State already has a really, uh, you know, I say already. I say already, but like for quarterbacks, this is prime recruiting time for 2026. This is already prime recruiting time. Jared Curtis, uh, Jared Curtis is, um, already there's a lot of buzz 
already there's a lot of buzz for Ohio State and Jared Curtis. So uh, I would keep a very close eye on on that relationship. We'll see where it goes. Uh, he's from Nashville. Um, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, depending upon what service you look at. Uh, one of the top one, two, three quarterbacks in the country, one of the top players in the country. Um, keep a close eye on Jared Curtis and Ohio State. Um, some other quarterbacks that Ohio State has good relationships with. Um, Ohio player uh, Nathan Barnhard, uh, quarterbacks Will Griffin and Julian Lewis. Although I think Lewis just committed to USC. But again, it's early. It's all very, very early. These are the 2026 kids after all. Uh, running backs, Javen Malloy, um, Savon Hitter, and Messiah Mickens. Already there's a player signed or, well, committed, not signed, uh, committed to the 2026 class. Uh, that is wide receiver Chris Henry Jr. And yes, Cincinnati fans. That name is familiar and it is familiar for a reason that that is, in fact, the late Chris Henry seniors son. Um, and yeah, he's a stud. He's already a stud. He's already amazing. Um, and he's already a Buckeye. Uh, and he's being raised by Pac-Man Jones. Yeah. Uh, and apparently, like, if you again, you're worried about, well, will he stay committed to Ohio State? Apparently, Pac-Man really likes the idea of Chris Henry Jr. playing wide receiver for Brian Hartline for Ohio State. So feels like it's a good situation. Um, Jabril Brady, I think, is another wide receiver who Ohio State already has an excellent relationship with and we should all keep an eye on. Uh, Peyton Cook is an Ohio player who, again, I think there's a, a, a good early relationship between he and Ohio State. Um, some other names that are, you know, Early target list for wide receiver, Ohio State 2026, uh, Malachi, Tony, Brody, Keefe, CJ Sadler and Aaron Gregory. Name all the SFE, oh, South Florida Express. Thank you for filling that in. Um, early tight end to watch. All targets. Yeah, I mean, that's that it always starts that way, right? It always starts that way. Um, tight end Xavier Tiller, uh, early relationship there. Uh, again, I think Ohio has a Ohio State has another chance to put together a really good recruiting class of offensive linemen strictly within the state of Ohio. I think that that is totally plausible totally possible once again um to to build a really strong offensive line class in ohio that would be ideal uh, the way we recruit offensive linemen yeah it would be um inside the state of ohio right now maxwell riley who i think is already a stud and is already excellent and ohio state does already have a good relationship with sam greer um land uh, landry uh, I don't know if it's uh breed or breedy. Um, and uh, those are all offensive tackles. And then interior offensive linemen, Will Conroy are all uh, excellent offensive linemen within the borders of Ohio, who I think Ohio State could get an excellent start at. Um, if we have talent, Ohio is always half uh, one slash. I assume you mean one or two, one or two years behind the South. So if these pups are biting, get them. Yeah. One dash two. Uh, I'd also just say, because I was talking about this earlier before you got in here, it also has to do with Ohio high school um, practice rules. A lot of the Ohio kids can't go and participate in camps because they only have like tight practice windows. And if you can't go and like show out in camps, it's hard for, uh, a lot of the recruiting services to properly needs addressed OSHA. Yeah. Um, so it's hard for them to get a lot of these early rankings. A lot, of, a lot of Ohio players are simply under analyzed by the computer services 
And that's the Ohio High School Athletic Association's fault. Uh, some additional names to watch. Um, yes. Uh, additional offensive line names to watch from outside the state. Deron Parks, Jackson uh, Cantwell, uh, Tyler Merrill, and Micah Smith. So those are some offensive names to keep an eye out. Those are your 2026 primer names on the offensive side. Defensive side. Um, have some defensive tackles. I don't really have any defensive ends yet, so no defensive ends. Anyone from Mater Day? Uh, I don't think I have any Mater Day kids in the 2026 class. Um, some defensive tackles. None of these guys from Ohio. Uh, Deuce, Deuce uh, Gerald's, Jakeem Stewart, Tony Cumberland, and Bryce Perry Wright. Linebacker, I do have a couple of Ohio names, uh, Cam Thomas and Storm Miller. Uh, some additional names outside of Ohio, uh, CJ Sibley, Talone, Lily. I mean, that's it's definitely not Lily. It's LLI. So Lil. Not sure. And uh, Samo Mola. Uh, those last two names are. Uh, Samoan or at least Pacific Islander. So I'm butchering them. So I apologize for that. Um, we need some more all name kids. Who's the next Steel Chambers? Who is the next Steel Chambers? If you're still watching late in this episode on YouTube, who's the next Steel Chambers for Ohio State? Who is the next all name kid for Ohio State? Let us know in the comments and make sure to like the video and do all that YouTube stuff. Um, cornerbacks. Again, Ohio State's producing some really good defensive back talent. Um, two names, two early names to keep an eye on. Um, Victor Singleton, cornerback, uh, and cornerback Albert Hill. Uh, outside of Ohio, there is, uh, I presume, I, I assume this his name is Zach. It's spelled with an E. I presume, I, I assume it's not Zach. I've never seen Zach spelled with a E before, but I'm gonna go with Zach Fort um, and safeties, uh, Zealous Hicks and Jahir Edwards. Um, some additional athletes to keep an eye on. Um, we don't really have positions for these guys yet. Um, there is Justice Fitzpatrick. And once again, if the name Fitzpatrick, of course, Fitzpatrick is a fairly common name. But yeah, I believe he is the younger brother of... Um, the Alabama slash Pittsburgh safety. Um, and we have, uh, he, by the way, could be a wide receiver or a safety. Apparently um, we have Ephraim white uh, who might be a wide receiver, might be a cornerback. Um, and then uh, Kendra Harrison, uh, Kendra Harrison, um, Kendrick Harrison might be a pass rusher. He might be a tight end. He also might go play forward in college basketball. We're not even sure what, what sport Harrison's pursuing yet at this time. He apparently might be the best. He might also be the best forward in high school in the 2026 class right now, or at least one of the best forwards in, in, in high school right now. Uh, the 2026 class, at least. So we don't even know if uh, Condre uh, Harrison is even going to play football yet. But apparently if he does, he'll be one of the best tight ends and or pass rushers in the country. And that's your 2026 primer. We'll take him for that, too. Yeah, just he can go start playing basketball in January because that we all know that's when that's when Holtman's Buckeyes need additional talent is in January is when the season tends to fall apart. Let's see how we do against Wisconsin this upcoming. By the way, that's our social screen. We have a social screen in the Discord server uh, this Wednesday night. I uh, We need some backcourt help. Yeah, well, I mean, keep in mind, once again, there's a 2026 kid. So like. You know. Not 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 exactly showing up on campus anytime soon. All right, that's the end of the show. That was a busy show. I threw a lot of information at everybody. My throat kind of hurts, if I'm being honest. 
Um, not having Kyle here leads to a lot of talking on my part. My throat's sore. I don't feel great. Good job, not Kyle. Thanks. Um, but yeah, we went over some portal updates. We went over, we, I delivered my, what I'm calling my first earnest 2025 mock, including a full short list of targets to keep an eye on, uh, for the 2025 class. And we also did a primer, uh, what we like to call a, uh, a primer for the 2026 class. Just some names to keep an eye out on. That's it. Just some names, some names, some positions that Ohio State currently has some relationships with. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. And we're just going to call that the end of the show, I think. Um, tonight's ending music brought to you by a Columbus-based band called Snarls. Once again, the name of that band is Snarls. I see Chop Daddy is typing. I'm going to let him have the final word. Then we're going to kick it off to Snarls, I think. Although maybe he's not typing anymore. We're, we're, it, the pressure's on you now, Chop. All the pressure's on you. Join the Discord. Thanks, Chop. Everyone join the Discord. Once again, we'll be doing a social screen. Uh, this Wednesday, Ohio State versus Wisconsin. We all get in the ser we all get in a voice channel in the server and watch the game together. It's a lot of fun. And give to the Patreon. Guys, three dollars a month. It's only three dollars a month. And it's even less. It's even less money if you sign up for the whole year up front. You get a 12% discount. I think it's only like $32. $32 to support the podcast. And by the way, like none of this is free. I have to pay for an Adobe license. Uh, I have to keep the computer updated. Uh, none of this is free. Uh, I have to pay Discord money to keep the server at a certain level. Uh, none of this is free. This is There, there are expenses it's not just me and a and a cheap Dell that I picked up off the street and a and a webcam. Like the, the this is actually expensive to keep going. We love doing it. We don't make much money off of this at all. And basically, the little bit of money we do make, we put right back into the podcast. And it's all basically funded by the patrons. We get some Spreaker money too. The the podcast they they throw the ads in which I was supposed to do manual ad breaks and I totally forgot. Oops. We do get some money off of that. And if you want to avoid those, those, those Spreaker ads, you get your own podcast feed through Patreon that doesn't have those ads. So if you hate those, if you hate fast forwarding or sitting through the ads that pop up in the middle, the end, the beginning of the show for $32 a year, you can make them all go away. Or $3 a month, whichever sounds like less money to you, whichever is more persuasive to you. You can do either. Jared don't have a life and will always interact. I, I, it's a backhanded compliment, but I'll take it. I'm always in the discord server. I am always in the discord server. I I'm here answering questions, getting into fights with people. Um, good healthy debates i should call them but you know it is what it is completely worth it it's a great community i i appreciate that chop i think it, i think it really is i think it really is a good community um even a, even if i have to put them in line every once in a while not you chop you're you're a perfect angel uh <laughs> yeah, yeah no, notice how i didn't keep a straight face when i said it although he is one of the mods here so you know, end the show. That, that's a good idea. Tonight's ending music, once again, brought to you by Snarls. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Snarls. <laughs>